That's what we're supposed to call them. Abba, Papa. That's how intimate we're supposed to be with the Lord. Well, we are going through a study of a little book written by evangelist Harold Vaughn. It's called Biblical Protocols for Prayer. If you don't have a copy of this, you should order one because I don't have any more. <laughs> and you can order it. It's, it's worth having, it's worth reading. And uh, tonight, the biblical protocol that we're going to be looking at is from Psalm 100, verse 2. Come before his presence with? Singing. With singing. And so we're going to be thinking about the singing protocol. We're going to watch a, a brief five, six minute uh, video from uh, evangelist uh, Harold Vaughn. And then I want to share some thoughts with you and then we'll pray together. Psalm 100, verse 2, is the psalm that uh, he built his thoughts off of. Come before his presence with singing. You know, I wanted to say that prayer has many components, but one of the most often overlooked parts of prayer is what we're thinking about tonight, is the melody that flows from your heart through your mouth to the Lord. I think that that's an important component in our prayer lives that if we haven't uh, utilized it, we ought to incorporate that in our prayer lives. And I don't just mean singing uh, before we pray, but you can sing in your prayer. Uh, it's part of really coming and communing with the Lord. But come before his presence with singing. Did you know that the word presence there is the same word that we discovered in Genesis 32 where Jacob comes away from that place that he named Penuel, the face of God, and he says, I saw God face to face, Panim, same word that is translated presence here. And so what is it to... Come before his presence with singing. Well, I want to share quickly three things. Number one, it's part of heart preparation. Heart prep. Come before his presence with singing. It, it's as if he's saying, this is a requirement in order to encounter the presence of God. In order to encounter God's face, you come with singing. And think about it. The ancient worship system that God devised for the children of Israel was, uh, was a vast music program. There were, there were literally 150 psalms, the psalms in the Bible. It was actually Israel's songbook. There were literally thousands of priests and Levites that sang as part of the daily worship, and many of them musical instruments as well. So was a big part of Israel's worship system, coming before his presence with singing. But if you think about that word presence, as it really means come before his face, in other words, a face-to-face -face meeting with God, then we're talking about intimacy here. We're talking about coming before the Lord. You know, you may be embarrassed to have someone hear you sing. But if the person that hears you sing is a person that knows you very well and accepts you for who you are, then it really doesn't matter whether they hear you sing or not, If you, even if you can't sing. When it says, come before his face with singing, what it simply is saying to us is that when we come to God's presence, there ought to be this part in our prayer life where what is in our heart flows through our lips to him 
And it is simply the reflection of what he already knows us to be. And also, it's that intimacy. We're, we're singing bef uh, to a person that we are to have familiarity with. Someone who is not a stranger to us, but someone that we're very, we know his heart. We know what, what God loves. And, uh, and you know what you love about him. And so coming before his presence in this way with singing is that uh, you, you simply, you sing to him about what you love about his person and what you love about his power, what he does. And then also, it's a heart preparation, come before his presence with sin. Not only does it uh, connote intimacy, but also clarity. And here's what I mean. Come to his face with singing. In other words, it gives us a proper focus and that focus is we are to sing not only about God, but we are to sing to God. Now, did you catch that in our song service tonight? We were not singing about ourselves and our relationship to God so much as we were singing to God about Him and what we love about Him and why we love Him and that we do love Him. And so coming before his presence with singing, when we have time alone with the Lord, it not only is intimacy face to face with him, but it gives clarity. It gives us a proper focus. Paul said, singing with grace in your hearts to, to the Lord, to the Lord. We don't come here to sing to one another. And when someone sings a special, they're not singing so you can clap and, and say, oh, that's a wonderful rendition. No, we are singing to the Lord. Okay. And so it's heart prep. Come before his presence with singing is heart prep. It is a melody of praise that becomes part of your conversation with God as a lover would sing a love song to the person that he or she loves. Do you, uh, you're married? You ever sing your spouse a love song? Maybe you don't anymore, but maybe you did. That's what this is. This is heart preparation. This is, this is singing to the Lord. Clarity, intimacy. But there's a second thing that I want you to catch tonight. Not only is singing to the Lord heart prep, but it's also heart flow. It flows out of the heart. Singing, a specific form of praise, uh, a, a, a melody that is verbally expressed, that the Holy Spirit, he tunes your heart to sing God's praise as, as you reflect on him. You remember how the, the songwriter says? Streams of mercy never ceasing tunes my heart to sing thy praise. What is he saying? We sing these songs, we don't think about the words often. What he's saying is, when I reflect on the unbounding mercy of God, it causes my heart to sing praise to him. Praise flows out of my heart as a result of my thinking of his mercy. The heart flow, singing in your prayer time, it's spontaneity. It's something that is prompted by the Holy Spirit. It's the love of God filling your heart and overflowing, and it needs an outlet. And it comes out in singing. It's from the Holy Spirit to your human spirit through your mouth. It's like what was expressed by Mary when she said, my soul magnifies the Lord 
and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. It's just spontaneous. It's unchoreographed overflow of the heart. Come before his presence with singing. It's a heart flow. It's spont spontaneity, and it's to be done joyfully. Come before his presence with singing. The word singing actually means to shout for joy. And we know that joy is the fruit of the Spirit. Joy emanates from the Holy Spirit that is joined to your human spirit, and the Spirit himself in you enables you to exchange whatever sorrow you are having, whatever depression you have, for God's joy. And that is expressed in a, in a heartfelt melody. Come before his presence with singing. It is spontaneity, this heart flow. It is joyfully, but it's also intensity. I didn't mention Psalm 95 and verse 2, but he says in that psalm, Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Make a joyful noise. All the nations are to make a joyful noise unto the Lord, the, the psalmist says. Well, he already said in the, in the video that the terminology there, joyful noise, means to split the ears with a shout. In other words, turn up the volume. It's loud. In other words, intensity in your coming before his presence with singing. Don't hold back. It's got to be wholehearted and a free flow. You know, one of the marks of the Welsh revival that took place in the early 1900s was their singing. To this very day, that revival is known for the singing. It's amazing what revived Christian hearts sound like when it comes forth from that cleansed heart, that pure heart to the Lord. I'm not sure, but I think you can even go online and perhaps even hear some recordings of people in Wales during the Welsh Revival saying it's phenomenal. Come before his presence with singing. Singing. It's a part of our worship. It's a part of our time alone with God. It's heart prep. It is heart flow but it's also a heart lift. It's heart lifting. What I mean is, when you sing to God, listen to me, it affects God. When you sing to God, it affects God. You know God has emotions, right? Mm -hmm. Guess what? You can stir God's emotions in a great, in a positive way when you sing to him. It affects God, but also, you know what? it mightily impacts you. It mighty, mightily impacts us. It's heart lifting. Singing to the Lord is, heart, is a heart lift. It, 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 uh, it's creativity. You know, God created music, and he did so for his own glory. God, listen to me, is a master musician. And God made you in his own image, which means that whether or not you can carry a tune or play an instrument, you are made by God, who is the master musician, and thus you are given a connection to music that perhaps you didn't even know you had, because you're like him. I heard that Freud hated music. There's something, there's something deeply wrong with people that hate music. That's not, that certainly isn't normal. We sing to the Lord, and when we sing to the Lord, it's a very natural way of communicating with him. Mothers sing to their babies. It's a very natural thing for mothers to sing a lullaby to their babies. Lovers sing love songs to each other. And believers sing to the Lord. It's a natural thing. It's creativity. It doesn't have to be a song that someone else wrote. It could just be a song that the, the Spirit of God puts in your... It doesn't even have to have a, a catchy tune. 
It's the Spirit of God puts it in your heart and you sing it to the Lord in your own tune. It's creativity, but it's also this heart lift is all about sensitivity. I don't know if you heard this. I saw it on a news program. I also read it in an article. But a few years ago, American uh, uh, Americans that were living in the American uh, uh, embassy in Cuba developed problems. They came down with headaches. Some of them had nausea. Uh, some even said that they had some kind of brain damage, and they began to look into it, and they believed that that uh, embassy was being invaded by a mysterious sonic high-pitched sound that caused these symptoms in these embassy personnel. Sound. It affects us. Sound can affect us, in this case, physically. Sound can affect us emotionally. There is sensitivity here, and he already made mention of this, but do you remember when King Saul started to go off the rails, if I could put it that way? He was starting to lose his mind. And he was, he was afflicted by a demonic spirit. He was oppressed by a demon. Remember that, reading that in 1 Samuel? Well, one of the things that would happen is when he would be oppressed by this demon, um, when that demon was upon him, David, who lived in the palace at that time, he was a young teenager, David took a harp and he played the harp, didn't sing any words, just played the harp, the sound, with his hand, and it says, Saul was refreshed and was well, and the evil spirit departed from him. Isn't that interesting? You see how important music is in a human soul? And here, here, it's not even words. We put always put the emphasis on the lyrics. It's not even the words, it's the sound. If there is a musical genre that can drive away a demonic spirit, there must be a musical genre that can bring in demonic spirits. Ah. You see, music is not without morality. The sound. It's not just the lyrics. It's the sound. Because the sound itself had this soothing, refreshing, demonic, uh, scattering effect upon sensitivity. The right kind of music will free and refresh the human soul. It's heart lifting. You'll get a spiritual lift from the right kind of music. And there is connectivity here as well in this heart lift. You see, here's how it works. Here's the connection. Here's the connectivity. God warms the heart in us, and then we reciprocate by singing to him. We are made and designed. God has linked us together to praise, and he knows that when we sing his praise, we are most blessed and most complete in our personality when we sing praises to him. So, in closing, here's what I want you to do. I want you to identify and collect songs that magnify God in your heart. I want you to put together a repertoire of songs, if you haven't already, that do magnify God in your heart. Secondly, I want you to start or continue every day with songs of praise. Start and continue every day with songs of praise. When you get up in the morning, the first thing you do, start with a song of praise. And I don't mean turn on the, you know, a, a CD or whatever. In your own heart to the Lord. Third, Sing heartily each day, especially 
when the difficulties pile on, when the afflictions come, and when the disappointments happen, that's when you need to sing. It's heart lifting. It's heart preparing. It's the heart overflowing. As a result of an awful outcome in their circumstances, someone asked me recently, so what now? And immediately God put in my heart the proper reply to quote a song. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Or Hebrews 13, 8. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. That's the answer. So, let the Lord put a song in your heart. It's a song to him, but it will have fringe benefits for you as well. It will be the heart flow. From his heart to your heart, back to him. But it will be heart prep for you, and it will be heart lift for you as well. So, Heavenly Father, teach us the important component of prayer that we often overlook, of singing to you. Lord, I pray that we'd experience some of the blessing, and that you would be exalted, you'd be magnified by us song to you. In Jesus' name we ask it. Amen. Amen.